Hi guys, it's Daniela again and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought I would bring to you 10 makeup brands I've never tried and why I got this idea from the tailor. She recently uploaded this onto her channel and I found it really fascinating hearing about what like brands she hasn't bought from and why she hasn't bought from them or tried. I thought it would also be fun for me to do it because one, I don't get PR so I don't have like access to a lot of brands unless I'm buying from these brands with my own money. I obviously have to go buy like kind of what people recommend and then what I want to try and that's how I discover brands. So I haven't really tried a lot of brands. I've got a much bigger list than YouTubers. I really don't know who was the creator of this tag so I don't know who to credit but it is a well-known tag. I hope I explained properly. So yeah, let's stop talking and let's get started. Okay, so the first brand I want to talk about is EXO Beauty, which is Shan EXO's beauty brand. The reason why I haven't tried it is it's obviously coming from New Zealand. I really don't know if she has international shipping. I'm very uncomfortable with buying things overseas because of taxes and customs. If it's not on like a UK website like Beauty Bay or Cop Beauty, I'm very unlikely to buy it just because I don't want to get charged customs. I would love to try her highlighters because like, I don't know, I really like how she likes very like glowy highlighters and not like glittery or shimmery. So I would love to try her brand. So the second brand is Jouer Cosmetics. So Jouer Cosmetics is really like kind of spoken about by YouTubers. Like their lip toppers was really like hyped up. Their foundation, I heard quite a lot of people say it was really good. Their concealers are new and they're spoken about pretty well. You can get it off Beauty Bay now. And the reason why I've never tried their brand, for me, it's just a brand that doesn't really interest me. I know it sounds a bit harsh. I was really thinking about getting their lip toppers, but then it's like £13.50 for a lip gloss. I think that is very expensive, especially when I have quite similar products here. These are like the L'Oreal Extreme Dazzle lip glosses their other products just don't really speak to me as much the eyeshadows do not speak to me at all i don't look at them and feel like creative it's not a brand that has ever really caught my eye so the next brand is melt cosmetics so melt i don't think we can get in the uk i think it's an american brand they do do international shipping so the brand melt cosmetics i've heard a lot of people talk about i know jamie really likes it I've heard loads of other people talk about it and I've always wanted to try their stacks. Like the radioactive stack, I think it's the one that I really wanted to try. This stack here, I really, a while ago now, wanted to get this. It's £36.49p. I think £36.50p basically is quite expensive for four eyeshadows. And I just can't justify paying that much for four eyeshadows. I've heard the formulas are really good. Like I've heard nothing but good things about it. But I just can't justify paying custom and taxes. Next brand is Charlotte Tilbury. Fellow British woman. She is a British makeup artist. Like well known British makeup artist. And you can buy Charlotte Tilbury now off Cold Beauty. So the reason why I have not tried Charlotte Tilbury is because they're shit expensive. The only thing I do want to buy is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I've heard so much good things about this powder, how it doesn't like make you cakey, you can layer it up. But it's £34 for a powder. Don't get me wrong, I've looked and I've put it in my basket, but I've never bought it just because I can't justify the cost of the product. Her other items, I honestly don't look at and get like this overall excitement or like creativity. They don't really speak to me not that they're ugly or that they're bad products they've got beautiful packaging it's just something that i wouldn't buy so the next brand is kylie cosmetics it's a brand i've heard a lot about it's been highly hyped about when their lip kits came out i really wanted to try their lip kits really wanted to try it but never did because customs again it's kind of the same reason as the melt cosmetics and the exo beauty customs and taxes i don't want to pay a fortune on just bringing it over and to be honest the brand now just doesn't interest Next me brand is 
Makeup Forever. For me, Makeup Forever is very much high up in like artistry and creativity and being kind of pioneer for the creativity and artistry of makeup. Just catering to artists in that sense, like they do effects, they do artistry kind of makeup. I really like Makeup Forever. I like the whole like, I don't know what it is. I've always liked Makeup Forever Every time I've gone into a Makeup Forever, I always feel comfortable. I actually didn't write anything for Makeup Forever in my notes, but the reason why I haven't bought from them is I just haven't. There are things that I want to try so badly. I want to try the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation. I want to try their um, Mist and Fix setting spray, their primers. I really also want to try their Makeup Forever Ultra HD Liquid Foundation. I've wanted to try those two foundations the setting spray, the primer, for ages. I just haven't bought them because one, I've got a lot of makeup. I don't need any more. I can't really get makeup forever very easy just because there's not a counter that sells makeup forever anywhere close to me. But I do want to try makeup forever so badly. There are things that I would like not buy. Like I would never buy their eyeshadow brushes just because they're expensive. I've had lipstick on my teeth the whole time. So the next brand is Lily Lashes. I have never and won't ever buy from Lily Lashes purely because they are fucking expensive. To me, they are. Like, Lily Lashes go from, like, £30, I think. And for me, I don't wear lashes like that. And if I did, I would not be spending £30 on lashes personally. I'm sorry. I just think that's so ridiculously expensive. I've heard loads of people say they're really nice and they're really good. Like... They're worth the £30. I just don't wear them enough, like, to invest £30 on lashes. And at the moment, they're all pretty sold out on Beauty Bay, so a lot of people do buy them. But for me, I don't wear lashes enough. My next brand is Lime Crime. And Lime Crime is a brand that does not interest me at all. Yes, it's a cruelty-free brand, which I think is really great. It was an eyeshadow palette that I was like, oh my god, that looks quite cute. This was ages ago. Like, this wasn't in the last two years, I think, or three, maybe. But I just never did. It's not a brand that I think I'll buy from. I don't know how much they are. I don't know if they're expensive brand or not. I don't know if it's what's happened in the past that's kind of put me off the brand or whether it's just not interesting to me at all. The next brand is Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath is a... British makeup artist, like a world-known British makeup artist, like a lipstick, £35. I could never justify that. Like, don't get me wrong, like, packaging, stunning. Like, the whole overall vibe is stunning. The eyeshadows, to me, there's nothing really that screams to me. The Mothership palette is £115. It's just a lot of money. If anything, the first thing I would probably buy if I was to buy anything from Pat McGrath was possibly a lip liner, just because you can't really go wrong with a lip liner. I was so close to buying one of her lipsticks, like honestly so close, but just couldn't justify £30, £35 for a lipstick. But I was honestly very close. I've got to say, packaging stunning, A++. For packaging and branding i really like it so my last brand is natasha denona so very similar to pat mcgrath she's a makeup artist like very well-known makeup artist i really like the whole color scheme that she does um the only reason i haven't bought from her is that she's expensive um i really wanted to buy the sunset palette which is this one but i just generally cannot justify 111 pounds for a palette i like the color schemes when she comes out with palettes there's another palette that's recently come out it's like the camel palette and i really like that but i just could never justify that price for a palette i can't imagine having an eyeshadow palette that's so much better than everything else that is worth 111 pounds does that make sense i don't know so yeah guys this is 10 makeup brands that i have never tried and why Obviously, a lot of reasons, but majority of it's too expensive, not paying customs and taxes, um, don't know how to get it from, like, wherever to here, and it doesn't interest me, and it doesn't, like, spark creativity. So the only really brands I can see myself buying from in the future, like, realistically, is Exo Beauty, Melt Cosmetics, uh, Forever, Forever, Makeup Forever, and... Mm, Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona 
But the brands that I really highly doubt that I will try is Charlotte Tilbury, Jouer, Lily Lashes, Kylie and Lime Crime. So I will most likely try five and really like unlikely try the other five. Please let me know what brands you haven't tried and why I would find that really fascinating. So yeah guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up, some comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.